Welcome to my guide on the Storm's Crown Extreme. This fight is actually very simple execution-wise, but comes down to being one of the most intense quick fights out there. So fast that a minute of explaining might cover mere seconds of fight time. With a relatively low DPS check, as long as you're able to perform the mechanics without getting greedy, it should come out with a win. Just good luck healers. Before getting into it, I want to note that in the description there is a link to a poll where we basically see Enrage due to me messing up severely and our summoner disappearing twice due to disconnects. If you want to see the full fight up to Enrage, well, we still kill it about one minute early. Check that video. And one more note, this is one of the few fights where I might recommend turning effects down. Go into Character Config, the Character tab, and turn Party Effects to Limited. Never turn them off. Off turns off healer bubbles too. Before you start the fight, establish clock positions and light parties. Clock positions are typically done by placing a marker at spawn, a square one ideally, and everyone picking a side or corner. Have the tanks and healers pick sides, with DPS picking corners. These correlate to points on a clock, or directions on a compass if you prefer. Decide if you are doing it based on true north, the North Compass Point is based on the map and minimap itself, or boss relative, the direction the boss is facing is north. Personally, I recommend True North. Light parties are as the name suggests, light parties as you see every dungeon. One healer, one tank, and two DPS. Place a 1 and a 2 marker and split into these two teams. These are for when you have to split up for stacking mechanics. There are other agreements to be made, but I'll go over those as we progress into mechanics that deal with those specific issues. You also want markers placed, putting the matching colors next to each other for several mechanics later. Her first mechanic is to use Void Arrow 4. This is her basic raid-wide attack. It doesn't overly hurt, it's enough that you may want to mitigate later when things get interesting, but also make sure to heal up instantly where possible, which is the theme for basically every single bit of damage this fight gives. Next, she will jump to the middle of the arena and do Raging Storm. Anytime she forcibly jumps to the middle, she will use this. It is a raid wide that does low damage, but often follows heavily damaging mechanics. This leads right into Savage Barbary, which has eight possible combinations. Three mechanics back to back, with two possible options per mechanic. While Savage Barbary is in the bottom left, we will be covering all of the options and details of this mechanic alone. Regardless of which options she uses, she will face a random direction and throw her sword in another random direction, indicated by the arc above her. The sword's landing will do a large circular AoE up to about the middle of the arena, be at least that far away. With this comes the first two-pronged choice, indicated only by her stance. If she is standing straight up and holding the sword to her side as shown here, she will do a large AoE with everywhere inside of her hitbox being safe. She will swing her sword, damaging all areas outside, then throw her sword to the designated spot in a swift motion. The other option is when she is hunched down like so. The sword will be held over her. The direction she is facing is the direction of a line AoE across the whole arena, before throwing her sword in the indicated direction. It essentially cleaves the arena in half, the safe side, and the location her sword lands. Just stand outside of her hitbox, opposite of the sword's landing spot, to be safe. With Hair Raid, we get two pairs of random mechanics. The first is the Hair Raid itself. She will grab the sword and either balance on one foot, or hunch down once more. If she is straight up and balancing, you once again want to stand inside of her hitbox to dodge the coming attack. She will pull a sword to her, hitting the entire arena outside of her. If she is hunched over, she will jump toward the sword instead. When reaching it, she will do a wide conal attack, with small safe spots at the wall. Get to the wall safely, then immediately resolve the third and final mechanic of Barbary. The third mechanic is either a spread or stacks immediately after the hair raid resolves. These are hairspray and deadly twist, respectively. This is where both clock spots and light parties come into play. How to resolve the stacks remains the same regardless of which hair raid you get. Get into your light parties after the in or out resolves, relative to the sword's placement. If she does get the middle hair raid, stay still. 
If she dashes to the wall, just run straight toward the wall with no adjustment. If it is spread, all players will be marked with AoEs. If she is standing in the middle, you can just wait for the AoE to go off, then run out of her hitbox in the direction of your clock spot. If she jumps to the wall, it gets a bit more complicated. You all have to run to the edge of the arena, and then spread out after the hair raid. You may want to agree on some rules here, such as melee DPS stay next to the boss at the wall, and the tanks stay next to the boss, but run toward the center of the arena. Then ranged and healers get the outer parts of the safe spots. Both options hurt pretty hard, especially if someone is missing from the stacks. With everyone there, it hits about as hard as Void Arrow. And needless to say, getting hit by two AoEs is instant death. Make sure you're healing everyone up quick, as she will shortly jump mid with Raging Storm and do a second Savage Barbary, the exact opposite of the first one. Again, there are eight possible options for the first Barbary. Let's take In, Wall, Spread as the first set of mechanics. That means the second set is guaranteed to be Out, Middle, Stack. It will always be the exact opposite mechanics for all three parts. React to the first set, and you can plan ahead for the second set. After the second Savage Barbary, she will use Void Arrow 4 once again, so make sure everyone is sufficiently healed once more. This leads right into the first Tank Buster, Void Arrow 3. This targets the current main tank and requires a tank swap. It does AoE splash damage, decent damage without proper mitigating, and puts a wind damage up debuff on them. Failing to tank swap will kill the tank, as every auto attack is now tank buster damage. Using Raging Storm again, she will go into teasing tangles. Once again, bottom left indicates how much is involved in this one mechanic. This will randomly pull players into cardinal areas tied to a central pillar. One DPS and one tank or healer will be placed in each section. Try to walk beyond the green boundaries and the pillar will pull you back into the center. Upon being placed into these random pairs, one of you will receive a large AoE bigger than the circle you're trapped in. The other will either get nothing, or a blue enumeration circle with two floating shapes indicating you need two players inside of it. This enumeration is called Upbraid, which will come back a lot, so keep this in mind. What you need to do is pair the players with nothing with the players with enumerations, without leaving your circles. To do so, run to the edge and use the enumeration puddle size to reach over to your partner. Meanwhile, the players with the large AoEs will hide toward the back of the circles on the opposite side for maximum safety. This is made more obvious by Secret Breeze being launched into each circle, making the middle sections unsafe. There are rules you can establish for this mechanic to make it easier to deal with. For example, my static was using the rule of enumeration groups always go to 1 and 3. This is possible due to the fact that enumerations always spawn across from each other. This can be north and south, or east and west. All of these do fairly light damage on their own, but is made more significant by Secret Breeze. The first set is avoidable, while a second set is all targeted. All eight players will be given a Kono AoE that they need to spread out for. If you stay within range of your enumeration partner, for example, you will both die from taking two AoEs. So the moment the large AoEs and enumerations go out, make sure you're all three or four steps out from each other. It's a small movement, but a quick one needed. Even with taking only one AoE, both damaging mechanics will have resulted in a decent amount of missing health. Sprint is also highly recommended here if you struggle with the positioning and speed of this mechanic. She will follow it up with Void Arrow 4, so get mid for healing as soon as you can. Heal this up as well for a final Raging Storm before she enters her phase change, Curling Iron. She will begin to rapidly spin, making the inside of her hitbox do a light knockback. It's no big deal if you get hit by it, but just avoid it anyway by stepping outside of her. When she finishes, she will do a raid-wide attack that hurts quite a bit. This mechanic will happen multiple times through the fight, but this time alone, she will enter a phase change mode. Use any of your stationary mitigations that you wouldn't use otherwise to reduce the damage of Catabasis. The moment she lands, you can begin attacking her again. This is where the fight will speed up. Good luck. The arena will also be smaller for this part of the fight. 
Clock spots come in again for tanks and healers to get targeted by Brutal Rush Tethers. She will dash at each player in a random order, doing light damage and sending a small line AoE in their direction. Ideally, stand just inside of her hitbox at your clock spot and sidestep the moment she damages you. You stand inside of her hitbox to keep her stationary. If you don't, she'll move around much more and change the angle of the line AoE. She will finish this up with Boulder Break combined with Warning Gale. Warning Gale you just need to avoid the middle of the arena and the swirling AoEs being sent out. Boulder Break is a stacked tank buster. Both tanks will want to stack up and take the damage together. You have time to move into positions between Brutal Rush and the AoEs going off. Feel free to stand on the healers as a DPS so you don't accidentally get hit by the tank stack. This is ideal since the stack is fairly large and the clock spots very close together. This is also a good place to use tank invones, rather than having the tanks quick run to stack together. This next bit is a lot of mechanics all at once, but ultimately only involves some simple in and out movement. The moment the boulder and gale go off, run to the direct center of the arena for three attacks. The gale will have summoned clones that will do two sets of line AoEs across the arena, with the center being safe. Barbaricia will then mark every player overhead. When it expires, it will place a giant AoE where they are standing. Standing mid, we dodge both sets of clone AoEs and place our giant AoEs dead center, leaving everyone room to dodge the next attacks, of which there are another four. Warning Gale will be indicated before the overhead markers resolve. Do not panic. Wait for the giant AoEs to appear, then run out to your clock spot. We are going to clock spots because in addition to the gale and the markers, we have brittle boulders raining down on every player for some targeted AoE damage. With clock spots safe, we can spread out and take the damage safely. Make sure you are all healed up before going out. Immediately following the boulders landing, she will do Tornado Chain, hitting the center of the arena for as big an AoE as the marker AoEs and do a second AoE shortly after the first that hits the rest of the arena. Simply step in after the first AoE goes off. When stepping in, tanks and healers or DPS will be paired up for upgrade. There are four pairs, so every player needs a partner. This is one way the arena markers come in. The two purple markers, D and 4, always pair together for minimal movement and thought. Immediately after, Brutal Rush Tethers will go out on every DPS. Get back to your clock spots, stand just barely in her hitbox, and dodge out of the way of the line AoEs as soon as she hits you. With no time to breathe, Knuckle Drum is next and is the hardest hitting attack in the fight. She will do 14 quick ground slams, speeding up for the last few, and one final slam after. Each of the quick ground slams deals upwards of 9.5 thousand damage, or let's say, up to 140 thousand damage in less than 10 seconds. Then the final hit is a full on raid wide attack. Be careful of using all your healing tools here. It hurts an extreme amount, but there is still a lot more damage coming after, and another knuckle drum in only a minute and make sure you're all stacking together at some agreed upon point during the knuckle drum. The next mechanic goes better with everyone stacked, ideally at the rear of the boss for some positionals. Also, be max melee range. In a theme you've probably seen coming, there will be five more mechanics all together for the next bit. This starts with Blown Away, which will be a 16th ground slam, doing light damage and placing four sets of AoEs under all players. Rotate around the boss as you dodge, stopping at the edge of the previous AoE to place the next set. At the same time, she will be using Brutal Rush on the tanks and healers. Just dodging Blown Away will automatically have you dodge the line AoEs from the rush. With the fourth Blown Away and Rush, three more mechanics will go out. In the center, she will do Impact. Standing inside of this is Death, but you might want to stand right next to it. This is a knockback with not much leeway between it and the wall of the arena. You can negate the knockback though. If you do, 
be ready to manually run to the edge. During this is Bold Boulder and Trample, Distance Space Tank Busters and Stack Markers, respectively. You may want to have static positions for this, such as Tank 1 Northwest, Tank 2 Northeast, and the party stacked South. Regardless of if you use knockback mitigation, make sure all three groups are fairly spaced apart and at the edge of the arena after the knockback goes off. The proximity damage of the tank busters is fairly high and requires some mitigation, both tank CDs and party damage reduction. Keeping maximum distance will lower the damage for everyone involved. For Trample, she will jump on top of the stack marker, then jump back to the middle for a set of brutal rushes on the DPS. Quick run to your clock spot, and be ready to adjust if anyone is slow on the uptake and aims an AoE towards you. When the last rush goes out, Teasing Tangles will once again lock everyone into pairs of DPS and non-DPS with a lot of mechanics going out. No matter which group you are, immediately split up. One person to the left, one to the right. Stay to that side if you can, but if you need to dodge over to the opposite side, do so. Just make sure you commit to a side. Blustery Ruler goes off as you regain control of your character, beginning to spawn tornadoes that spiral out towards the groups. These are simple to dodge alone when she uses Dry Blows. This does very light raid-wide damage and starts to randomly spawn circular AoEs around the arena. Dodge around these while not moving into the path of a tornado. Next, she will use Tornado Chain, while opposite groups will get Uplift enumerations. North and South, or East and West. This is why we split up left and right, so everyone has a partner and all four enumerations are solved. The Dry Blows will end with you dodging the Tornado Chain. Dodge both of these and then run to the edge of the circle to share the enumeration. As a small tip, watch this little trick. These tornadoes that skirt the edges of the circle do not skirt the edge of the circle. You can fit between the edge and the tornado safely. Dodge the final tornadoes and get stacked up in the middle of the arena ASAP. Heal up the damage from the mechanic and deal with a second knuckle drum. As I said, this is only one minute after the first ended, so healers will need some good resource management. Iron Out finishes up the phase with her doing the same phase transition spin, but without the part where she leaves the arena. She'll turn back into her base form and the fight will begin to repeat with new mechanics added in. Welcome to phase three. First is Entanglement, which marks pairs with colored shapes. We have the blue X, green triangle, red circle, and purple square, also known as the PlayStation markers. For those of us with color abilities, we can match the colors of the shapes to the colors of the markers, which is why my group has them together. For those who are colorblind, you'll have to remember which number is which. One is circle, two is triangle, three is X, and four is square. You don't need to get to those spots before the mechanic goes out, but you will want to get there regardless. The selected partners, once again a DPS with a non-DPS, will be tethered together with a circle encompassing them. The tethering will pull you both together, even if too far away. You are both free to move around the entire arena as long as you stay together. The circle follows you both based on where you are. Run over to your intercardinal markers and spread out to the edges of the circle, keeping in mind that the center of the circle moves based on the midpoint between you two. Barbariche will cast Secret Breeze down the cardinals of the arena, then Conal AoEs at every player just like before. Use the first set of AoEs to spread out, each partner up against the edge of the AoEs, then stay still. The second set that does damage should automatically resolve itself, as there should be enough distance between everyone. Just be sure to stay outside of her hitbox to be further spread. With this begins the point of truly repeating mechanics, with Savage Barbary coming out just like at the start of the fight. After the first will be a Void Arrow 4 into Void Arrow 3, and then a second version of Entanglement. Same as before, head to your colored marks or designated number marker and don't go too far away from your partner. Two of the pairs will randomly be granted uplift enumerations and the other two, nothing. Without spreading out from your partner, you must group up with one of the empty pairs. 
and these are all two-person enumerations, so only one partner per circle. One way to do this is the DPS take the inside of the boss's hitbox, while the non-DPS take outside the hitbox, while still remaining tangled. There's actually a lot of time to react for this one, so don't panic. Another rule you can also enact is for when enumerations are opposite sides of the arena, say, 1 and 3. Have the enumeration groups rotate clockwise around the boss to the empty groups. But if both enumerations are south, both groups just have to run to the north. The empty groups can also adjust to meet the enumerations halfway. The second Savage Barbary will come out next, being the opposite of the first one. Void Arrow 4 into another Raging Storm will finish this phase and return us to the Hyper Curling Iron phase. Again, she will do the knockback wind and have no disengagement. She will turn into the other form and immediately start doing more mechanics. All repeats, though. Spread to your clock spots for an immediate brutal rush. This leads straight into Knuckle Drum, hurting as much as ever. Stack up and do the same movements for Blow Away. During it, you'll get markers over your heads again. After the fourth Blow Away, run mid to stack them all there, same as the last time. Run out to your clock spots to dodge, since you'll get Brutal Boulder Spread AoEs. She'll also end up tethering to DPS for Brutal Rush again. There is absolutely no helping that she is going to be going wildly all over the arena for these rushes. Stay relatively near your clock spots to better aim the Brutal Rush, and don't forget to dodge the follow-up AoE. She'll jump back mid for another mechanic trio. Tornado Chain into Impact Knockback with Hairspray Spread AoEs. So react to the AoEs and stay in your clock spots. Feel free to negate this knockback if needed, and prepare for Tank and Healer Brutal Rush. From here, it's just mechanics vomit for the rest of the phase. No execution, but just a lot to process. We have tornadoes along with the dry blows like last time. She will also do the shared tank buster along with tornado chain. This leads into warning gale plus the two AoEs the clones cause plus Tornado Chain. Staying at your clock spots should dodge these. Then, before the Warning Gale's ending AoE, group up into your stack and proximity tank AoE positions. Remember, be at the edges. There is no impact this time, so no knockback to worry about. This goes right into Knuckle Drum once more. Stack up for heals, and this will end the phase. Iron Out will go out, and Phase 5 will begin. This is just a complete repeat of the mechanics from Phase 3. Entangled Spreads, Savage Barbary, Raid Wipes plus Buster, Entangled Enumerations. Savage Barbary, and then she will Enrage. Again, if you'd like to see my group get close to that Enrage, the link is below. Congrats on beating Bayonetta. I mean Barbariccia. I'm sorry to all you Black Mages out there. I hope you're enjoying being brand new summoner mains and hope you enjoy the great content you are now seeing of me getting the mount on my first clear. Also the crafting item on the second, which I made her sword and gave it away to the ninja. Thank you for watching my Storm's Crown Extreme Guide. Rate, comment, sub, buy some merch if you want. All that fun stuff. Follow my socials linked below, and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care, and may the power of Anna Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Zadia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Frasier97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, Steven, T Rogue, Tim A, and Zero Two. Take care, thanks for watching, and see you for the next one.